Taking some leg damage, these boys. Yeah, Gaethje with some. Oh, he got him with a raw overhand oh, right. It's over. Oh, that is it. There is a diamond from the bayou in the heart of South Florida. Where top five UFC lightweight Dustin Poirier perfects the sweet science that first lured him to combat. I started boxing in Louisiana. I was very interested in boxing growing up. I ran into some guys at a boxing gym who were working on their boxing for mixed martial arts, and I started talking to them. Yeah, good angles. Two, three punches, turn. Six, seven months later, my wife drove me to my first fight. This is the king of Lafayette, Louisiana, Dustin Poirier. He is just this massive bundle of potential and skill that needs to be home to the perfect fighting machine. Oh! Poirier is sharp with those hands tonight. Look at Dustin Poirier just pouring it on. Caught him again. I'm really impressed with this kid. Oh! Blasted him. That's it. That's it. It did not take long for the Louisiana local to make his presence known in the UFC. Oh! Big left hand for Hayden's hurt back. Oh! He might be out. There it is! starting to improve upon the accuracy now. For Poirier stacked up wins with crisp boxing. Oh, down goes McGarrett! It feels good to be home, Louisiana! And a relentless offense. I don't care how much pain I go through, how much I bleed. I mean, look at those shorts. There's a little bit of white left at the very top. He puts himself in danger. Every time he's willing to stand there and just trade punches. He's here to fight, man. This dude is not intimidated by the moment. And there's a nice combination again by Poirier. Poirier is throwing lead. Dustin doesn't always have that mentality of being a safety first fighter. Turned on that post. But we're always going there to get a job done. How long could Dustin Poirier fight the urge to actually do that? How long? <laughs> I've been doing this for a long time, and I grew up in this octagon. This is my life. This is how I eat. I got mouths to feed, and I want big fight. I have fought the who's who in mixed martial arts in the UFC. Champion after champion, top contender after top contender. Oh, oh. he him with that left hand. Alvarez in real trouble. They're wrong. This is what Poirier wants. And is forced to cover up. I've proved that I belong with the best in the world, earned where I'm at, and I'll be here as long as I want to be. For Team Poirier, a particular chapter in their epic story is currently top of mind. Offense, Justin Gaethje just might be the most watchable fighter in mixed martial arts. Justin Gaethje wants to go to war. He wants to go to battle. He wants to get in there and sense fear from you. The guy lives for this stuff. Time to saddle up again, champ. Yeah, we both know what we're getting into, man. Oh, the left hook connected for Gaethje. Oh, uppercut, right hand, big uppercut again. Oh, that's it. An This is just the only way Gaethje knows how to fight, man. Non-stop. Gaethje said it would be hard for Poirier to be patient with me in his face all night. Oh, nice combination by Poirier. Oh, oh, oh yeah. That was heavy. Oh, wow. Both fighters landing in the pocket. This legendary chin of Justin Gaethje has been tested tonight. It took a lot, man. Yeah. Poirier did good work with his box. Oh, oh nice combination by Poirier. Oh. oh, that kick. Those reactions are getting bigger and bigger. And that's because that leg's hurting. But Poirier doing a good job staying heavy on the offense, though. He's landing right back. He's not stepping back and just eating shots. He's landing back with Gaethje. This is what we expected. These guys fighting in a phone booth. Nice combination. Right hand lands flush over the top for Poirier. My footwork was good this fight, man. I didn't sit in front of him. When I did, he hurt me in the third round. Oh. He hurt. That's the Poirier's hurt. And Poirier said he didn't necessarily fear the one-punch knockout power of Justin Gaethje, but he breaks a lot of guys who say, I've had enough. This guy's a maniac. And you saw Poirier move that right leg back. Just the thought of eating another one, and there goes Gaethje again. You're talking about two of the toughest fighters on this roster, top to bottom, putting on an absolute show tonight. Poirier now. Oh! 
Gaethje's looking for the finish here. Gaethje hurt. Gaethje hurt oh, bad. Oh, my goodness. Gaethje nearly out on his feet. Poirier continues to land. Oh. Dustin Poirier by Oh, knockout. my gosh. He does it. A wow. fight for the ages in Glendale. Wow. Goes to the Louisiana. Dustin Poirier. So Dustin Poirier dealt with the leg kicks. He dealt with the fellow legend, Justin Gaethje. Three, two, one. Left foot in front. Yep, a little bit more. Five seconds. Three, two, one, and relax. You got one more. Great job, Justin. I remember a lot of pressure with it being a home fight in Arizona. Good, stabilize your core. Wonderful, keep that. Um, from a small town. Good, don't lose it, keep it. Started wrestling really young. And then I got an opportunity to come up to Colorado and got a scholarship. I started fighting while I was wrestling in college. You know, the word tactical wasn't even in my vocabulary back in those days. Fought a specific way, and I was positive that that was the way that I was supposed to fight, so I knew I was going to keep going, and I fought that way against Justin Poirier. It's crazy watching Justin Gaethje fight because this is the way the fight goes every single time. And he beat that guy. The oh! seminal blow comes in round four, and Dustin Poirier closes the show. Poirier now has another shot at capturing the coveted title belt in the Octagon on July 29th, which will be a highly anticipated rematch. UFC 291 on Saturday, July 29th. The main event will be five rounds between the number two and number three lightweights in the world. Former champion Dustin Poirier takes on another former champion, Justin Gaethje, for the vacant BMF title. What's up, New York? The BMF title was created to celebrate a particular breed of fighter. This is for the baddest in the game whose heart-charging style guaranteed fireworks. Diaz just relentless. Jorge Masvidal and Nate Diaz have always done it their way. And now the moment has arrived. The BMF title is on the line. And two of the truest fighters to ever grace the octagon. The crowd get behind Masvidal as advertised this BMF title fight. I was seized by Poirier's like-minded teammate. The first BMF champion was my boy, Jorge Masvidal. Grew up in the gym with him. When I first came to American Top Team, he was already a name in combat sports. Undefeated in the streets. He started scrapping at 14 years old. He has put Miami on the map. Oh! The guy's a vet, and he was the first BMF. Right, you gotta get both legs. With the inaugural BMF champion hanging his gloves up. It's been a long 20 years, 50 some fights. I love all of you. Walking away. I'm out, y'all. 305 for life. Let's put it back on the line. Nearly four years removed from its inception, the one-of-a-kind prize is back. Dustin Poirier, he's not trying to get anybody out of there quickly. He's trying to drag you into deep water and hold you under because he thinks he can hold his breath longer. Only certain times throughout the UFC is there going to be an opportunity when a perfect storm comes together where two guys make sense to fight for the BMF belt. That's why this is special to me. Yeah, no, you got an appetite. It's not an undisputed title, but man, being a bad <laughs> that's something else. We are not the same. He's trying to break you. But fighting my whole life, you treat it like a game. And of course it's significant to keep the belt here at American Top Team. I know Dan Lambert has his trophy cases up front, and he'd be proud to put another one in. I want to take this time to thank America's top team. These are the people that helped me make this moment possible. There's a reason that this belt was created for fights like this and guys like Dustin and Justin. Oh, wow. This is what we expected. These guys fighting in a phone booth. George St. Pierre may be the greatest fighter of all time, and everybody wants to see George St. Pierre fight, and he was an amazing fighter, but... You don't look at George St. Pierre and say he's the BMF. We are not the same. Nice combination by Poirier. You're not going in there and having a slobber knocker where blood's flowing and every fan's going crazy throughout the whole fight. No, I ain't playing oh! The two BMF.
EMFs in the company right now are looking for fights, what better to do than match them up against each other? I can see through you. We are not the same. Oh, wow! Five rounds, me and Justin. The style of fights that we put on. It's gonna be nasty, man. BMF belt commands respect in the fight game. Representing grit, determination, an innumerable bevy of attributes. Applied to fighters who have earned the reverence of their peers. And the anticipation is palpable with Team Gaethje. This belt is a little different. The bad mother after a bout. Everybody knows it's a UFC fan. These two guys deserve this bout more than anybody. Five seconds, good job. Keep that. You don't find fights with Dustin that aren't exciting. Yeah. God, you. Ah, good. Ah, good. I love it. <laughs> You don't find fights with Justin that aren't exciting. Eight, nine, ten on the side. Go. Ah, focus on technique. Ah, you. We ready for war, so know it's complete. Gotta be ready if you stay ready. Ready and now we coming for top spot. If you remember the first fight, it was absolute fireworks. Gotta be steady. What you gotta know is one thing. You know they're gonna bring it again this time. Shit. All day, it's go time. I'm ready for ready for war. Just know this, in all time, we can't equip heavy with more. They always do, and for five rounds, you know you're gonna get your money's worth. Just know this, in all time, we can't equip heavy with more. The BMF title, there's only one in the whole world. I'm proud of that. I'm one of the guys that gets to fight for that. Fundamental today, sharp. No matter how tactical or aggressive I'm being. I love it, Justin. Keep your shifting. Kick at the right time. People's eyes are just popping out of the head, and they can't believe what they just witnessed. Oh, now Keiichi loading up with a hand. And the power in that shot. I mean, you could hear that. Good work, guys. I love it. Good work. This is entertainment. This is the entertainment business. Justin, beautiful. I already love this round way more. And that's the fight you want to watch. A there's the take down to finish. Be smart, yep. Yeah? Thank you. Win position, baby. This is a car crash for the ages. Keep working, keep working. Yep, yep, yep. Keep going, keep going. Good work, Justin Gaethje. Ah, wonderful, guys. Excellent. Right here at Arrowhead Golf Club, second annual Justin Gaethje Golf Classic. Got a bunch of family, bunch of friends. Yeah, we're gonna have a good time today. Former UFC interim lightweight champion Justin Gaethje can often be found relaxing among 18 holes in the Colorado Hills. Where on this day, the Denver local uses his passion to give back. I work with an organization out of Texas, Hero Sports. A bunch of veterans that set up different things to get bets together, to promote the camaraderie that they're all kind of missing. This is the second annual tournament that I'm putting on for them. We've got a lot of cool stuff available for you guys, so don't miss out on those raffle tickets and the silent auction. I have a human services degree. Social work was what I was going to do, so working with people, working with organizations is something that I enjoy. We appreciate Justin putting this on. His family's here today to support him. We've got the UFC here, so thanks for everybody being here. Especially veterans. I didn't serve, so I want to give back as much as I can to those guys. We rolling! Money to make, boys! 
plenty to make. We had 120 golfers out here today. We're probably on track to raise at least $50,000 from the tournament. Come around. We had a lot of great sponsors involved that are affiliated with UFC. All of them have stepped up big to support the veterans this year. Let's go, boys. Nice shot, Justin. Put an all-star team together trying to win this thing this year. Nice. I don't think we're going to take first, but we did finish 10 under. Got to play with my mom all day. She just picked up golfing, so I, you know, I loved having her on my team. Come on, we're good. You show you lucky one out of 18 shots. My dad got to kick his butt. That's it, Ray. A couple of my coaches, so it was a great day. <laughs> He's on that old dance straight. I want to really thank you guys for coming out and supporting such a great cause. Second year in a row. Hopefully, we'll be back next year. Any chance I can, I try to raise some money for these guys. And I love to support vets. I didn't serve, so it's the least I can do. Thank you. And thanks again. Thanks for coming. What's up, girl? Back in South Florida. Let me see that tooth. Let me see your tooth. Gaethje's July 29th opponent, Dustin Poirier, anxiously awaits the presence of family. Oh, that thing's about to fall out. That will soon permeate the final weeks of UFC 291 training camp. When you come and see me, girl? I don't know. <laughs> I'll tell you, three days. A routine that Parker Poirier is comprehending more and more. Hey, what you want to do when you get here to Florida, girl? Yeah. As my daughter gets older, she understands what I do for a living, but she was born into it. She's been helping me roll out mats and hitting the bag since she was walking. Hey, mom told me you're going to do gymnastics here. We're going to put you like in a gymnastics camp, like a short one, so you can still practice. Yeah. I do the first week of camp by myself, kind of temper myself into the workload, get a schedule together, and then my family flies in a week later. Hey, you was hitting the punching bag? Yeah. Until my, my hands started hurting, so I just yeah, but you're pretty tough. It's great to have him here with me. I can come to the gym, be the tough guy, be the hard worker, do two a days, but every time I go back home and I walk through the door, my daughter's there, and I don't have to be a fighter. All right, baby. Daddy got to go train. I love you so much. I love you too, Dad. I can go home and be a dad. It's all about balance, man. I don't have to do this anymore. Me and my family are good. What gets me excited about fights now, where I'm at in my career, is fights that make me nervous, like this Gaethje fight. Justin Gaethje is brutal, and he wants to inflict damage on anybody that dares step foot in the octagon with him. I need the danger. I need the fire. I need the uncomfortable. The guy is an absolute savage. He was put on this earth to fight. The most exciting fighter in the world. Pick your poison, be careful, because this man's deadly. If the name gives me those butterflies, if I know this could be bad, those are the ones I take. And it's gonna be that kind of fight. Now I'm coming for you. Now I'm coming for you. Now I'm coming for you. Ooh, let's go. On July 29th in Salt Lake City, Born fighters go toe to toe once again in a rematch that will guarantee fireworks and crown the baddest in the game. They are two of the realest, most respected fighters in the game. Both men are richly deserving of this opportunity. The BMF title is on. I see myself using my athletic ability. Oh my God! Oh. Gaethje loves the chaos. Beautiful combination from Gaethje. He's one of the toughest men alive. Creating damage. He just destroys everything in his path. Oh! oh. I'm going to go in there and play a 50-50 car crash match, and one of us has got to go. Justin Gaethje is fearless. Oh, it's over! But how do you bet against Dustin Poirier, one of the most dangerous 155-pounders ever? He's an absolute dog. He relishes long, grueling war. It 
it won't be easy. He's trying to dominate and break you. But I see myself beating him again. Oh! Big left hand land by Poirier. Hates you nearly out on his feet. Oh, Poirier continues to win. Oh, oh my so goodness. It's go time. It's gonna deliver. It's as simple as that. Yeah, this is the fight, man. This is the fight. Today we're just wrapping up the camp. It was just a little bit of light sparring flow, just to keep the sweat going and to keep working on the motions that we're gonna be using in the fight. We're in a good place right now. It's just, you know, count down the days to make sure we're ready to compete. We've been at the highest level for a long time, but we're enjoying the ride. Being at their first bout was in 2018. I think Gaethje's might be going into this with a different, different sort of game plan. Whatever he decides to do, whatever he brings that night, you know, we'll be ready for it. We've got different elements and different wrinkles to our game as well. So if plan A doesn't work, we go to plan B. We're locked and loaded, man. We're ready to go for July 29th. Easy work. All day long. July 29th, only on pay-per-view. So we've been in Salt Lake City since Wednesday, and uh, we came out early just to, we wanted to make sure that we had everything right prior to fight week. The team's in great spirits, he, there's no injuries, Justin feels great, we're right where we need to be. You didn't get no coffee at the house. Why? Why? You told me I could have it. No one said that. You Come on. Too. You ain't yes. never the girl. I cannot have coffee. The top two rows, everything else you can have. There was two left. You're an idiot. Remember, Justin. You ask for the bull, you get the horns. Oh. You're about to get the f***ing horns, dude. Oh, yeah. I just feel so bad for you, Luke. <laughs> How's that on? <laughs> Dad, that was the best roll I've ever seen you do. All right, time. Time. <laughs> Justin and Dustin, these guys, they put on the, one of the best fights I've ever seen. Justin has wanted this fight for a long period of time, so, you know this is gonna be the best fight of the year, no doubt. And here we go, switch. Keep that, keep that, keep that. Yeah, come on, come on, short time. Come on, time. And we got sprints. You are done. Great push. Terrence, get a picture now. Look at him, he's stacked up right now. Oh, that's so gross. Oh, Luke. See, that's what you shouldn't talk about the coffee. For me, you know, I'm a competitor, so anytime I get a chance to get a loss back, go. You know, I've lost to this guy before, and I can't, uh, I can't go 0 2. Being the competitor I am, I'm not going to be okay with that. So, I'm going to give it my all, like I always do, uh, max effort, and you know, try to be perfect. <laughs> hey, walk back. This is tight as f to get out of here, man. Yeah. Austin Powers over here. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> We're in town a little early to acclimate. We'll go to Whole Foods. You know, we have a little bit more freedom, more room to play with some food, and um, just kind of got a little menu planned for him. Fresh ingredients are super important. I mean, if we equate it to race cars and NASCAR, I mean, are you, you putting low quality fuel in, in a race car, it's not going to run the same. So we're taking that same approach over here to MMA and to Dustin's body and, and fueling it with the, with the right nutrients and uh, making sure that he can run properly. Keep it spicy. We're at Fight Week here in uh, Utah. First uh, MMA training since we've been here in Utah. That first one is always an important one. You want to get that flight out of you and uh, all systems to go, man. He's feeling great, looking great. and. Uh, Killing machine, man. It's very good, you know. One of the best strikers in the world, you know. I, I believe, I think he's the best boxer in the UFC, so. Saturday night, the yeah, diamond's no. gonna shine bright. We're back here at Crown BJJ. The owner talked to us and said, hey, would it be okay if some of my members came down on Monday night and, you know? You know, look at all these people here. Oh, you can't get me. Oh my gosh. 
<laughs> hey, it's like wrestling a buffalo. I gotta make him look good on camera, you know? When the camera's off, that's when the beatings come. I give him, I give him. There you go, it's like, oh my god, you got it. The you first could. one hurt. Yeah. <laughs> Fun day, not too hard on his body. Yesterday we had a full day off. This one's like a half go today, so a little bit of rolling and take a little bit of the impact off. Nice hand position, Justin. Head time. We did a little bit of just fun mitts for the crowd to watch and you know get to see a fighter at the highest level. This is really cool. One, two, three, one, two. <laughs> Justin's a guy that likes to have a lot of fun, and he's got a different demeanor this time. You know, he knows what he's facing. He's facing Dustin, the best in the world, you know, outside of the champion. <laughs> That's you. What's up, man? Uh, you ready to get cracking at this fun stuff? Let's do it. You've done this a million times, so this is quick and easy. Okay, let me grab a water. The one they did for the Connor 3 fight, either the Connor 2 or Connor 3 fight with just our faces, this was probably my favorite. This one's pretty cool, too, though. The usual suspects. I used to keep them all and frame all these. And then over the, all the years of so many fights, I ran out of room in my garage, so we just took them down. Then I started only keeping, I keep them all obviously, but only would frame the ones where I main evented. But now I think this is like my 10th or 11th or 12th main event, so I'm, I, I don't have wall space for 12 of those. Oh, what are we doing here? <laughs> You guys are really sleeping right now? Look! Great, great. I miss you, buddy. God, yeah, you are light, Ray. You are light. We're at the house that we're staying at here in Utah. I just, my mom and dad just flew in today, so they came over and then go work out tonight. The minute I hear about a fight, I start getting nervous, but not horribly. But watching the countdown this week and watching all his videos, by the end, my jaws are clenched, my fists are clenched. I mean, I'm, I'm already just a nervous wreck. And my husband keeps telling me, it's too early to get nervous. It's too early to get nervous. I know. I know. going to No, what were you doing? Nobody. I thought that was your really mom good. smacking me. <laughs> huh? I thought that was your youth. Ah, I knew it. Were the lumber train I tap. I tap. Oh, I'll definitely get up there. Today, all we're gonna do is just turn on the engine, turn it off, and uh, you know, raise the heart rate a little bit, stay sharp, get ready to weight cut. You know, slowly bring that weight down. Now we get to have fun. This is the fun part. It's either you get smoked or you smoke, Luke. Oh, man, it looks like you're getting out oh, there. Where you at, Ollie? By all means, here you go. If you want, I'll get this one. Come on. Let me put the gloves. Come on. Someone call 911. Is there still, I know you said you do this because you get that excitement, you get that fear, but like fight week, is there still that nerves? Is there still that excitement? Or at this point, is this 
This is just who I am and what I do. It's just part of the process. It feels normal to me, but what never goes away is those feelings and that anxiety all week, prepping, you know, thinking about the fight when I lay down at night. That never goes away. That's always there, man. Just I know there's always that uh, kind of excitement level before a fight, but uh, a fight like this with a guy that you've been in there with that you know is going to put you through those car crashes that you're used to, what's, what's the feeling like ahead of that? Yeah, I feel good, man. It's, it's always nice to be, uh, you know, back in the main event under the spotlight. Um, you know, I missed it. So I'm excited to be back here and excited to perform again. It's what I love to do. Talk about prep for this fight. Like I said, it's been nothing but big fights, right? But a, a fight that you know is going to be a battle that you had before and was a battle, right? I mean, is there a different mentality or a different approach knowing, like, you know, I'm, not, I'm probably not going to get out of there and get out in five minutes. It's, it's going to be a battle. It was five years ago I beat him. He's done great things. I've done great things. And we were just on a collision course, it seemed, to, to, to do it again. Number two, number three. Number one's fighting the champ, so it just it just makes sense, I think, in the division as well. The BMF title, uh, you know, kind of become a, a, a love thing. It's fun. Does it does it feel like because you've been in championship matchups? I mean, does it have the same feel as a true championship matchup, or is it just kind of a, a fun aspect? I of mean, the fight? I think this fight gives you that feel without without anything on the line. Um, but yeah, I mean, for the legacy, it's huge. You know, we um, first is championship belts, and second is legacy. That's why we fight. Uh, third might be money, but those first two things are very important. And, you know, we're all trying to create a legacy that's going to live on well past our time, and that's that's been my goal from day one. You know, it's a crazy thing we do, but the plan is to get my hand raised, and then when the smoke clears, we'll assess the next fight and where the division's at and what happens in Abu Dhabi and all. You know, it's just so much things that need to happen and that are going on that is just noise until Saturday happens. So I'm fully focused on 25 minutes with Justin. And it's wartime, man. Are you looking at this also as a number one contender fight? We know we've got a championship matchup in a few months. I mean, are you thinking about that? Yeah, absolutely. I think this is number two versus number three. I mean, number one's fighting the champion in October. And then, you know, we're going to fight the winner of that, the winner of this fight. Oh, there's some hardcore gaming going on over here. Yeah. Hardcore. Oh, we got Uno and Dice after, after we show. Yeah. Nothing but competitive racket sports and card games for cash. Right, trying to pay rent over here. Damn, this is mess. Check this one out. Where's your stuff? Eddie, I'm about to go to bed, and I hope you have the best day. I love you. Where's your stuff? Your fight. Bye. I love you. Oh my girl. So we had Traeger come out. I got all my family here, my coaches. Figured I would get them fed. We had the Traeger boys, they're based out of here, so they came through and hooked us all up. I should have had them here after weigh-ins. We can do that. I got some American Wagyu brisket smoked on the Traeger. Just pulled them off like two hours ago. Put them on at midnight. And then I got some baked beans and I put some chorizo, pork sausage, and bacon in. Doctored up some baked beans, so a lot of good food coming. This is 16 hours on the Traeger. Oh my god. That's American Wagyu. <laughs> tasted the meat, but I definitely ain't tasted nothing else. It's good. So good. I don't know if I, I don't know if I can wear it. Welcome to the UFC 291 press conference from Salt Lake City, Utah. Justin, the highlight. Please welcome UFC superstar, Dustin the Diamond Poirier. All right, who has the first question? John Morgan. Dustin, I know you've had tremendous success in rematches throughout your career, so I'm just wondering what you attribute that to. Why have you been so successful the second time you get in there with us? We fought five years ago. Me and my team, this whole camp, we went about this like it was a new fight. My last fights, the growth... My, my confidence, my mindset, all of that, that's what's driving me forward, not that fight. Like I said, this is a new fight. Justin, I want to ask you as well. I mean, uh, you were in there with them. What was the biggest surprise for you in that first fight? Maybe something you didn't expect or something you learned about Dustin Poirier that night? Yeah, I would say his resilience. You know, I uh, landed some big shots. Never once did I feel like he was going to quit or give in. And, you know, he's a dog, and I love, uh, love these fights. So uh, I'm a competitor. I love competition, and I'm here to fight. For Dustin and Justin, uh, a lot of talk about the BMF title. It's finally sitting there just a couple feet in front of you. Uh, does that bring any more excitement, or would you just think now that you've had an in-person look? It's going to look great on the wall. Um, this does a lot for our legacy. Uh, we, all, we all dream of creating a legacy 
that will live on forever. So this is part of that. This is a huge statement. That's what it is. This is a legacy fight. And we have one of these sitting in my gym, and this one's going right next to it, man. It's cool to even have your name in the hat to be considered a fight for something like this. Not any man can wear this belt, but the undisputed title is the ultimate prize. And from being the undisputed world champion, that's the ultimate goal. So today is uh, Thursday night and uh, starting our weight cut. I feel really good about this cut. He's getting quiet, he's in that grind mode and uh, man, I think it'll take us about two, maybe two and a half hours. I feel good about it and we're gonna do our job, we're gonna make weight. Having Kamaro out here with him is just, uh, just a blessing. You know, having someone to move around with and play spar a little bit is way better than hitting mitts. Like the work right now when you're cutting weight is really, really tough. Oh, oh. Yeah, it's uh, a fight between these two guys, uh, the Ustins. Uh, it's, a, it's an amazing fight. It really is uh, fight fans to life. You know, both guys have improved a lot. Both guys are sharper, stronger. They're really fighting the best right now in their career. So, you know, of course, I'm riding with Justin. I think he's just so much more mature, smarter, and, uh, you know, this is scary just engaging right now. All right, so we're here in Salt Lake City, Utah, official way, and this is the Beehive State, and I'm told that the buzzword here, no pun intended, is progress. You want to talk about mixed martial arts progress in this state? We did a press conference here Thursday, packed to the f***ing nines, ceremonial weigh-in later today, and we'll be at capacity, of course, at the Delta Center to see what happens on Saturday night, but we're excited to be back one year later. All right, thank you all for being here for the official weigh-in for UFC 291, Poirier versus Gaethje 2. And we will begin with the gentleman around whom this fight card was built. First fighter to the scale, former UFC interim lightweight champion and the number three ranked contender, Justin Gaethje. 156 on the nose. 156, the official weight for Justin Gaethje. All right, next fighter to the scale, also competing for the BMF title on Saturday night, also a former UFC interim lightweight champion, the number two ranked contender, Dustin Poirier. 155, the official weight for Dustin Poirier. First time driving a high, high end car, I think. Come on, Justin. Get together. What's happening, Salt Lake City? Welcome to the weigh-ins. When I step into the octagon, it's win by any means. That's the attitude. That's the mindset. Oh, we both left it all out there that night. My career is my story. It's my life. Every fight is just another chapter in this book. My quickest way to a title shot is through number two, and that's Dustin Poirier. This fight will be different because I'm better, he's better, but also might end in the same way. Introducing Dustin, the Diamond, Poirier, and Justin Casey!
This is a fantastic fight between two of the very best in the sport and a rematch. What does this fight mean to you? It means everything. You know, chance of redemption. I can't wait to blow the roof off this place. Let's go. I can't wait to watch you, sir. Good luck to you. Justin Gaethje, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with Dustin Poirier, ladies and gentlemen. Dustin, it's a fantastic fight. A great rematch, a fight that was a huge victory for you. Give us your thoughts on what this rematch means. It means everything, you know? Look, I'm ready for war, and I'll see you in the trenches tomorrow. Thank you so late for coming. I had a great week here. I'm going to leave it all out there. I promise you, blood and guts. Let's go! Dustin Poirier, ladies and gentlemen. He's a tremendous athlete. Perhaps we don't make enough of his athletic ability. Two inches in reach for the slight favorite, Dustin the Diamond Poirier. Follow my instructions. We will keep a clean fight. Touch gloves, let's do it. Good body kick early there from Poirier. Dustin does his best work with his hands. Ooh. Ooh. Nice body shot. And a land upstairs by Gaethje. Under three minutes, round one. Beautiful straight right from Gaethje. Oh. He's just kind of hit, giving you his shoulders. And they're kind of deflecting the shot. Good straight left there by Justin. That left eye really bothering Justin early in the fight. Nice jab from Gaethje. Beautiful jab. Oh! Or excuse me, heavy on that front leg. Yeah. Oh! Oh! oh. 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 That round was fucking brilliant. That is dialed in. Excellent action in this first round. Let's take a look at some of it. Left hand connection for Justin up top. And again, Gaethje fans being heard from now. About a minute gone by round two. Oh! Oh! Justin Gaethje with a head kick. Wow. It I doesn't you, get any better than that. Utah does something for head kicks, boy. Oh, he didn't care. Oh, 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 it's perfect. Perfect. Justin Gaethje with the back flip to punctuate. One of the biggest wins of his career. The middle BMF title winner! Luck and chance are a, are a factor, and I'm willing to roll the dice any fucking day. Congratulations, sir. Justin Gaethje! Can we just get your initial reactions to how you're feeling at the moment? Um, it sucks, you know, obviously. Losing sucks, but I've lost before. I've said said the same thing before. It's not cool to be acquainted with these feelings, but I've been here before, you know. But, man, the career I've had and the fights I've had and where I come from, I feel like I've already won, you know. So I'm just taking it minute by minute right now, you know. But I'm good. No doubt. I'm good. If I win like a man, i got to be able to lose like a man. And, and so... I imagine family time is the first thing on your mind, but I mean, do you think about what interests you? I mean, you were going for the championship, and that's it. I mean, that was the goal. Are there other fights that interest you, or? No, no honestly, no. I'm just taking it one day at a time, one minute at a time, right now. But I'm happy. My life is good. My family's good. My daughter's excited for me to get home. You know, we're not at a funeral here. You know, I've won. I've won life. You know, I already won. Where I come from, I've already won, man. You knew there would be some adversity going in, right? He stung you a little bit in the opening round. Were, were, were there any surprises or anything different this time around that you weren't expecting? I was surprised by myself. You know, how good I fought. It was amazing. <laughs> That's a nice thing to be surprised about. Nothing that he did in there that bothered you, that the left hand that he landed, that uh, caused yeah. any trouble? Obviously, that's what I thought about every day for the last 12 weeks is the left hand. That thing's dangerous. Um, so, you know, um, yeah, I really didn't want to get hit by it. But today my coach said, don't worry about it. That's not what we're worried about. We're worried about fighting a fight, fighting your fight. And I went in there and I did that. I did that. Do you feel like at some point, obviously the title would be next, but somewhere down the road this is a trilogy that needs to be settled between you two? You know, um, in the cage after the fight, I said, hey, man, if we, uh, let's both agree to never fight each other again. <laughs> uh, and I said, unless, unless you have to have it, then, then, you know, I'm here. But we're one and one, so we'll see. You know, um, I would never deny him that opportunity, just like he did not deny me that opportunity. But, 
You know, I don't want it to be my next fight. Did you see the video of Kamaro's reaction to your knockout? No, not yet. I can't wait. My dad cried, though. That made me proud. <laughs> is that the first time? <laughs> he says time? no, but is that the first time I made him cry? He probably cried when I was born. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been a minute. <laughs> <laughs>